looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. Is that what you got? You used to think you own the street. We'll pack this bag and your ass is dead meat. Victory sweet. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 24 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on No Holds Barred wrestling podcast we are your canadian based rw podcast that discusses and reviews monday night raw and tuesday night smackdown from the past week as well as our twitter poll segment called the luke gallows polls and WWE headlines where we talk about any important news and a WWE. every week the lowdown show is broadcasted live on spreaker at spreaker.com slash nhbwp and after it is done it's posted in, on youtube soundcloud itunes spreaker and stitcher in full we are everywhere for your enjoyment and easier and convenient for you to listen to us if you'd like to join on the conversation and have your thoughts opinions and questions read on this podcast Tweet us at no holds bar WP or by dropping a comment in the comment sections on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and this week I am not joined by my co-host. He is away at corporate school and he cannot get to the podcast tonight, so I will be doing this solo in the studio. But that doesn't mean you're not going to get a lowdown show this week, guys. You're getting it, regardless or not, alone or with corporate cappy. I'm here to do it for you guys, so let's get it done. So, as we start off the show every week, let's get into your tweets. And we'll start off with at Craig Messi on Twitter. He says, Raw had to step it up because SmackDown has been better, or been the better show, and tonight's Raw was really good. He also says, the Cruiserweight match stole the show, and I think the right guy won, and Chris Jericho is hilarious. And then I do agree with you that on, on that, Craig. Definitely the Cruiserweights did steal the show. Uh, Raw is definitely better than it has been in the last couple of weeks. Um, the Cruiserweight that won, yeah, I kind of see how you can say that Brian Kedrick should have won. I uh, mean, the guy's old, and you know we'll get into that later on. But And Chris Jericho is always hilarious. I love that. So thanks for your tweets, Craig, as always. Moving on to Tony Mercer at Recrem Why Not on Twitter. He says... Better than the last couple of weeks, but Reigns winning was a dumb decision. Cruiserweight stole the show, in my opinion. So another person saying the Cruiserweight stole the show. Definitely agree. The Cruiserweights were probably one of the best highlights of Raw I've seen in a long time. Um, as for Roman winning, yeah, I agree with you, Tony. Um, that was really stupid. And as for my boy Kevin Owens losing that match, still didn't really make sense. But we saw what happened in the aftermath, which we'll get into after. Moving on, Gamma NU1 on Twitter. He says, like the ending, not much else except... Raw Cruiserweight, which you put the Raw Cruiserweight logo. I definitely agree, Gamma. Uh, he also puts, hoping for next week to be an awesome post-pay-per-view show like SummerSlam and Battleground. Uh, I really hope so, too. I really hope they start building off that, leading into their next pay-per-view of Hell in a Cell in October. So let's pray that it is a good show, just like this week, and hopefully a little bit of an improvement. Moving on to at Forlorn on Twitter, he says, Well, strong start, strong finish. Love that Roman didn't talk, but hate the constant interruptions of authority figures. Okay, I love that Roman didn't talk too, and I definitely agree with you with that. Um, it seems like it's a little bit overkill. Um, he says, The ups are the cruiserweights because the cruiserweights woke up the dead crowd from Teddy Long-style tag team bullshit, which is 100% agreeable. Uh, the crowd is definitely dead. I mean, the Memphis crowd is always dead. Like, seriously, I'll get into that later. But Memphis, you guys got to wake up and stop being so casual. Uh, moving on to with Forlorn, he puts, I was pumped for the list of Jericho, then Enzo and Cass came out, the, then the Shining Losers, and then the New Day came out. Okay, it's an interesting opinion. He also puts, I just had to use the bathroom because I knew what was to come next. There was no Jack Gallagher, which is a shame. <laughs> oh, boy. He also puts in, last up, no Darren Young in tightest segment for the second week in a row. Now that's just wonderful. He puts the wonderful gift from Broken Matt Hardy, which is hilarious. And I definitely agree with you there, uh, Forlorn. Uh, definitely uh, having them not on TV for the second week in a row is definitely looks like a good sign of them not having him on TV full time anymore until they figure out what to do with them. So I'm I'm glad they did something like that and uh, by keeping them off TV. He says, but question today is what are your fully detailed predictions of clash of champions and thoughts on james elworth well 
You got two shows to tune into, Forlorn, for that. One is a Clash of Champions prediction video, so stay tuned for that. And also, uh, James Elworth will be a topic on the Sunday Night Heat this Sunday when the Episode 2 topic is The Jobbers. Um, so tune in for those, Forlorn, to the answer to that question. It also puts, as for Cruiserweight Champion, that's all for tonight. Um... I guess he meant like uh, the the missing cruiserweight champion. I do agree. I don't know where the hell TJ Perkins was, but uh, he put five point seven out of ten was your score, or what's our score? Okay, well you're gonna have to wait to the end of the review for that. But he puts five point seven out of ten. Interesting score there, Forlorn. Thank you for your tweets as always. Uh, continuing with the tweets for Raw, uh, our number one fan in at real Michael Chow at real michael chow on twitter he puts raw did a good job showcasing all their talent for the go home show the cruiserweights and jericho definitely brought hashtag it i definitely agree with it pros Foley's greatest enemy the list of jericho cruiserweights co-main event raw and the pre end of the worst of seven series and if you guys don't know that that is the headline for us and michael chow's uh series name for the cesaro and sheamus series thank god it's almost coming to an end i'll get into that in the review cons are raw michael chow puts rollins and rusev get lame consequences i do agree with that uh tj perkins no shows raws despite being backstage which again is weird i really was weirded out that, that at least tj didn't come out during the introduction of all the cruiserweights uh, i didn't know what the hell was going on there and he puts roman gets an unnecessary win i do agree that that feel unnecessary um we'll definitely get into that in the review also let's get into the tweets for smackdown Going back to Gamma at, at Gamma and you one on Twitter, he puts the way the IC title match ended pissed me off. I definitely agree with that. Getting tired of the Nikki and Carmella story ending was cool. Um, yeah, I think we're going to get some clarification with Nikki and Carmella. This is uh, getting a little redundant and uh, definitely needs something behind this feud. Uh, I do agree the ending was pretty cool. We'll get into that in the review. So on to the SmackDown tweets by at Forlorn. He puts the start was great. Ending fuck the ending i'm tired of dean divas match i wanted to neck myself <laughs> okay interesting tweet there as always forlorn it was but brizongo isn't facing heath and rhino what the fuck so forlorn it's a huge brizongo fan as is corporate cappy so i know they'll get their shot one day guys so hold on eva marie didn't appear tonight with wtf i guess her elephants wants to see uh eva marie i i kind of want her to stay off tv there at forlorn i don't want to i want her to stay away from the title as far as possible and he also puts Brandy and Wyatt feud was has bored, no surprise. Yeah, basically it is boring and it's terrible. Um, I don't see how anyone can get actually behind that feud. He also puts Miz and Ziggler was the second best thing on TV. Want to know the first, do you? Well, I do wish I knew where this man was. <laughs> and he has a picture of Curtis Hawkins. I mean, we've been getting these promos like, the last couple of weeks by him on when he's going to make his debut. He still hasn't made his debut yet. Maybe one fact should say that Curtis Hawkins doesn't make his debut. He just cuts promos. <laughs> oh, man. But he also puts overall solid show. Fact have been better than with a even a re-entrance. Ugh, I don't understand. I don't know how you can get behind her. Um, he puts 6 out of 10. Has been better than Raw. Had a worse ending. Okay. Okay. Had a better start than Raw in a worse ending. Okay. I agree with you with that. Um... Craig Messi on Twitter also puts for SmackDown was a good opening, a good main event, and that's about it. Oh, and Heath Slater is money. Very funny. I think Raw wins this week. Okay, so interesting there. You think Raw wins this week? I read about Cochelle's Twitter comments are pros. Alexa Bliss turns the tables on Becky Lynch. Yes, interesting when you put that there. Uh, Cena jobs to Ambrose. Miz and Ziggler main event in the middle of the show. Um... Yeah, I guess that uh, I can see that as a pro. I mean, the match ending was really bad. Um, cons, he puts, Naomi tries to make Glow the new it, which, I mean, I agree with that. I don't know what the hell that freaking backstage segment was. Definitely not worth TV. Uh, Randy Orton beats Who Cares, basically, 100%. Uh, the Usos insult Slater's 27 kids and Rhino's crackers. Um, yes, I definitely agree. Why would you? this his 27 kids or 26 kids or whatever it is um question why should we care about bray wyatt he's lost all his wrestlemania matches his promos mean nothing when he keeps losing and i'll get into that into the smackdown review so stay tuned michael chow he also puts which nxc call up do you think has potential that the wb has failed to push 
my picks, Tyler Breeze and the Ascension. I'm going to have to agree with you with the second pick you put there is the Ascension. They're such a huge tag team back in the day. It's, incre- it's incredible. Um, as you know, they were like my boys before they even came up. I really thought they were going to do big, and now they're just jawed under since they got called up. So my pick would be the Ascension, Michael Chow, and I do think that they deserve a better push than what they're getting right now. Um, so we'll move in, guys to the raw review it waste no time here oh, by the way there won't be any luke gallows polls or uh breaking news this week um it's been a busy week for both of us as uh my my job has been uh, really stressful lately in a uh, corporate cappy at school so it's uh, been really tough to get a lot of stuff done so bear with us and bear with me for this episode and i apologize that there is no twitter polls or news segment like y'all ever cared anyways <laughs> you never cared about it you never cared about it. So we'll move on to the Raw review. So we get into the opening segment. Roman Reigns gets a, gets cut off by Stephanie. Um, Stephanie gets cut off by McFoley, basically. And then both Seth, Rusev, uh, for Raw. And then, oh, what the heck did I just write? See, this is what, this is what sucks. I don't have my, my corporate co-host here to help me out here. <laughs> uh, I'm all over the place. Um, yeah, I got some notes for Raw, actually. They acknowledge in the pre-show... That Bailey and Sasha's shoulders were down. If you guys remember the the match last week, um, how the ending happened, uh, Sasha rolled Bailey up in some sort of like uh, flip pin, and then, like Sasha's shoulders were down, and Bailey's shoulders were down, and it uh, they acknowledged it this week um, during Raw. Danny and Charlotte uh, were shown with Mick Foley, and were showing the footage of uh, the double pin, and uh, basically saying that. Um, Instead of uh, instead of the announced tag match for Raw, Bailey should face Sasha for the number one contendership. Uh, Mick says it's a good idea, and instead books Sasha versus Bailey versus Charlotte at Clash Champions for the title, and then thanks Dana for it, and then she just gets shoved down by Charlotte. Um, so basically, Dana is the one causing the triple threat now at Clash of Champions, and that's very interesting. Uh, you'll know my opinion once we do the Clash of Champions uh, predictions seg- uh, podcast. So. We get into the opening segment um, with Roman Reigns, Stephen McMahon, uh, and uh, and McFoley. Uh, Seth versus Rusev is booked for Raw, and Rusev versus Reigns for the U.S. title at Clash of Champions. Mick says they need to make Raw better than help the ratings. They book a rematch between has a stare down with Owens, and then as he's walking towards the ring, you'll notice he has a brief stare down with Roman. Are they shield teasing? Come on. I know all y'all out there are thinking it, and I've seen on Twitter, you guys are all thinking that there's going to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion, and you know what? I have an interesting theory about that, which you're going to hear right now. So, this is my theory. I think the S.H.I.E.L.D. are going to reunite. They're all three baby faces right now. I think the S.H.I.E.L.D. will reunite at Survivor Series. I think that Ambrose is going to... It's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into like a Survivor Series uh, tag team match, and it's going to be the club versus the Shield. I think Ambrose and Styles are going to continue their feud after No Mercy. I think Cena's going to win the title at No Mercy, and then Cena or Ambrose and Styles will continue feuding after. They're going to recruit team members for Survivor Series. Dean Ambrose is going to recruit Rollins and Reigns, and AJ Styles is going to recruit, obviously, the club, and it will be the club versus the Shield at Survivor Series. If that happens... Holy crap, you hear you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. If that happens, I'm going to lose my shit. But I honestly think that's what's gonna happen, even by that little teaser. I know it's not saying much or not showing much, but I think there are teasing a shield reunion and we're going to see it soon. But yeah, good opening to Raw. Good main event booking. I thought it was pretty good uh for them to book Owens and Reigns together in a cage match just to make Raw boosted more then SmackDown for this week, um, but we'll get into that when I reveal the ratings. Um, it's slowly looking that Foley won't last very long, though, as Stephanie looks like she's been she's been questioning Mick's decisions with stuff, so um, it's going to be interesting what they do down the line with Mick Foley and Steph. I do think that Mick is not going to last. Eventually, she will fire him and hire Triple H as the new general manager of Raw later down the line. I know it sucks, but I just think that's probably what's going to happen because it just looks that way. Unless, you know, I'm wrong and then we, we get Mick for longer than that. And as uh, Holy Foley continues on the WWE Network. So move on into the first match. Rusev versus Rollins was actually a really, really good match. Um, there are a lot of good spots back and forth. Rollins looks more baby faced than 
ever, especially after the ending of Raw. Um, the match actually ends, though, in a double countout. Uh, they brawl to the announce table area, and then freaking Seth Rollins climbs on the announce table and cross bodies off the announce table, which is on the stage, ladies and gentlemen, onto the Rusev, on, who's on the floor. Not on the stage, but on the floor. So that's a pretty high-risk cross body, and especially with Seth Rollins with a history of his leg injury. Um, that was just a crazy spot. What a way to kick off Raw, and what a way to have Seth Rollins just spot spot fest himself tonight, especially in the main event, which we'll get into later. Um, but backstage we go with the Mick Foley, Charlotte and Dana, as you saw, as I talked about earlier, um, they show, uh, the footage and then they book the, uh, the one match at clash of champions. We then get into Jericho and Owens, uh, basically mocking Mick and, uh, Jericho getting, uh, making a list of Jericho, which is pretty, it was unreal, and I just seen all over Twitter like everyone uh, retweeting that picture of uh, Chris Jericho in WCW with that massive list. So he starts the list of Jericho of all the things that Mick Foley's been doing bad, and it just it's freaking hilarious. Um, move move on on Raw. Strowman destroys Sin Cara. Enough said about that. You know how I feel about Strowman, guys. I freaking hate this dude. The guy just needs to find a feud already. I hate him squashing. Now he's just squashing talent instead of local jobbers. I just <laughs> I don't get it. I don't see why they're so high with this guy. He's just it's 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 awful. Like it's god awful. I hate watching Raw and hearing his stupid entrance sound. Oh, oh great! Here comes Braun Strowman. My my night's just been made. Braun Strowman is on my TV set, ladies and gentlemen. I get to watch a Braun Strowman match. How lucky am I? I could be watching TNA, but no, I want to watch Monday Night Raw and watch Braun Strowman squash someone. It's exactly why I watch Raw. No, it's not. It's freaking garbage, and it's bullshit how we get this shit on TV in a stupid three-hour-long show that should only be two hours so we don't have to see this shit anymore. It needs to stop. It needs to go away. I'm moving on. So move on to the tag team match. I ended up having the, the women's tag team match, Bailey and Sasha versus Charlotte and Dana. Um... So Charlotte, or sorry, Sasha Banks still nursing that back injury with the wrap around her. It match ends up being really good. Dana uh, causes some interference on Bailey's uh, belly to belly, or Bailey to belly, which causes uh, Charlotte to end up picking up the victory. Um, I mean, she wins with the big boot, which is really weird. I, I don't know why she didn't use natural selection or her figure eight. I guess they're trying not to make uh, Charlotte overly strong on Bailey, but she wins with the big boot. Um, I mean, who does she think she is, though? Like, Tess, Andrew Tess Martin? Was that an Andrew Tess Martin kick we just saw? Was that the big boot? I mean, I mean, I still can't get right my head around it. Yeah, I just said that it doesn't make her look... But then it kind of does make her look strong. Like, she won with a big boot on Bailey, who's supposed to be the next top diva in the division. I don't understand. But the match at Clash Champions should be really good if this is any indication of what uh, these guys can perform on each other. So I'm really excited for this women's match at Clash of Champions for the women's title, uh, the Triple Threat. Um, I know that my corporate co-host thinks uh, the Triple Threat is too soon. Um, he thinks they should have saved that. You know what? I agree with him. I mean, I honestly thought they are still just going to keep it one-on-one. Um, I just don't understand how they could just easily just, I don't know. Uh, he does think that Bailey's been handed a spot in that match. Uh, I, I kind of agree. I kind of disagree. We go back to what I said when she won against Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. So she definitely deserves some shot. But you know what? I do agree with him now that Sasha, that's twice now that she's been screwed out of her one-on-one match. And you know what? I'll have to agree with them. I think Bailey should be taking the back seat here and uh, getting her shot after this match. But again, shots are being screwed. Um, he's picking his girl the window at Clash of Champions and being the legit champ once again. But yeah, you know what? I definitely agree. I, it, it sucks. I mean, it was done way too soon. I definitely agree with him. Like we we hate when WWE rushes these big matches and big feuds. Like these they should be saved for like one of the big four pay per views. I know he agrees with me too. Um, I think though. It, I mean, we both think it could be match and night if they're planning on putting it at Clash of Champions. It's definitely going to be one of them. That in the cruiserweight match. Um, but yeah, again, it, they're rushing it way too quick. I think Bailey should have been left out of this, or maybe she gets hurt leading uh, or s- leading into the match, maybe like in the pre-show or something. And if not, you know what? Uh, whatever. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll move on on Raw. Seth and, and Stephanie McMahon in the office segment. Um, they talk about the fatal four-way. Uh, Steph blames Rollins for losing 
basically losing the world title to SmackDown. Um, Rollins basically turns on Steph here and tells, uh, and basically, yeah, just making you know what she turns. He turns on Steph. So this is basically the beginning of the baby face turn for Seth Rollins. At one point in the night, then Steph tells Rollins that he's been replaced as the man by Owens. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Are they actually going to be putting Owens as the new authority figure? If Triple H comes back and he's a GM, Owens is going to be their boy, without a shadow of a doubt. But this is basically looking like the official turn for Seth Rollins as a babyface. And I know a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of people out there are agreeing with this and they want to see Rollins babyface. But you know what? When you when it comes down to it and you're thinking a uh, long road and you're thinking down the road, is it right for Rollins to become a babyface? Like he's so good as a heel. He's the perfect heel and the perfect top heel in the company. I mean, I don't know how I feel exactly about a face turn. I mean, I definitely love it, but I don't know if it's going to succeed and continue to be good going long forth. I, d- I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. But we move on. Bo Dallas squashes the son of Michael P.S. Hayes, I guess. His name is Gary Graham. Um, he uses the crossroads as his finisher, too. I don't know if anyone notices that. Bo Dallas is basically using the crossroads as his finisher. I don't know if that's a jab at Cody Rhodes or what. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this. I guess Bo Leave and Bo Dallas, everyone. Bo Leave. Um, here's something I can't believe in. Cesaro vs. Sheamus in match number six of the hashtag worst of seven series. Um, okay. Sort of for once, I can say I can get behind this match because it actually was pretty awesome on Raw. I know it was the same crap we've been seeing, guys, but again, they still can put up a pretty good performance. I'm just tired of seeing Cesaro misused. The series needs to end already. I agree with Michael Child. This just needs to get the frick out of the way. It's the pre-ending. The last match is going to come at Clash of Champions, and I really hope Cesaro does get a title shot after, or this is probably going to be the last we see of Cesaro, or this is just storyline, and we're going to see him on SmackDown down the line. Um, into the match Sheamus did try cheating once and it failed the same way that Cesaro tried to win last week Cesaro ends up winning with the neutralizer and it was actually oh my god I, I don't know it was really really botched neutralizer I don't know how he won with that and we get another win for the most predictable series of the 21st century Cesaro versus Sheamus and is now tied at 3 if anyone cares out there no see I don't hear anyone no one cares out there um, let's move on <laughs> to something everyone can get behind here. The list of Jericho. Jericho comes out and reads out some of Fo- <laughs> Foley's failures. Um, he says uh, Foley loves Zayn and he's tired of it. And I guess this is lean to uh, Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn's feud. But out comes Enzo and Mori and they start shit talking and talking trash on Owens and about Owens and Jericho. And then come out the shining stars. Ugh, great. I don't know why my co-host loves these guys. I just I I don't I can't get behind them. They have this stupid little pamphlet thing now, and uh, I know they they can be a credible heel team in the division and in the division that lacks in tag teams. But come on, I just I don't know if I can get behind them. I can't do it. I can't. But don't be sour. Out comes the new day, and then the club. So this is Jesus, man. There's like freaking like half the locker room out here. Like what a way to make everyone fit on a TV in one segment on a three hour show. It's not like you don't have enough time. So let's put everyone on one segment. Unbelievable. So Jarek makes a new list for all the stupid ta- for all the tag teams and calls them stupid idiots. Then out comes Sami Zayn and starts a huge brawl with with uh with Jericho, which leads into the ring, and then everyone starts brawling with each other, and then Xavier Woods is sitting on the turnbuckle, uh, filming the match with his phone, and if you didn't see it, you can actually go see the video on his uh, channel, and he's just yelling, world star, world star, god, I was losing it, um, they're just so funny, I love the New Day, but this leads into a match, Sami Zayn, Enzo and Cass, and New Day versus the club, Shining Stars, and Jericho, it's actually a pretty decent match, good build for the respected feuds, I guess you can say, and Enzo and Cass actually pick up a victory and actually win this week, finally, I thought for sure we were going to see them lose for the third straight week, and I have more shit to complain about, but I don't, I don't, Enzo and Cass win, I'm happy, they get a victory over the Shining Stars, which is probably going to lead into a match against them at Clash of Champions. So we'll move on to the Cruiserweights debut. Finally, everyone was waiting on Twitter. I, could re- I read everyone's response and just reading feed and just seeing how much people are pissed off and waiting for the goddamn Cruiserweight match to happen. And it finally happens. McFoley's in a ring um, with freaking Mike Botches galore. Oh my 
God, I don't know what that was. Mick Foley was, must have been really tired of a three-hour show being going that late that he's been he botches basically his whole paragraph that he had to read. So he introduces Cedric Alexander, um, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, he also introduces Brian Kendrick, who's back. In the WWE, if you don't remember, he was gone seven years ago. Um, he, if anyone does remember, back in WWE, he was uh, on a famous tag team and one of the used to be the longest reigning tag team champions of all time with Paul London. Um, Rich Swan also gets uh, introduced. He, he's pretty cool. He's got more of like a flamboyant, uh, upbeat kind of uh, cruiserweight style of wrestling, which is pretty good. He's actually really good. Uh, my favorite though is Cedric Alexander. He's definitely my boy. And then we get the Grand Malik as well. He's really good. Definitely a strong Lucha Libre style wrestler. Um, so we get to announce that this Fatal 4-Way is going to happen, and the winner will face TJ Perkins for the Cruiserweight title at Clash of Champions. But we don't get TJ Perkins. I don't know where the hell this guy is. It was said that he was backstage, and he was supposed to appear on Raw tonight. I'm pretty sure they said it in the pre-show. But we don't get him at all. We don't see him anywhere on Raw. Why wasn't he at, like, ringside to, like, stare down the winner or, like, come to the ring or something? We didn't see TJ Perkins at all on Raw. Way to build that cruiserweight division. That was so stupid. They should have showed TJ Perkins. But other than that, this match was a instant classic. Thank Christ for that. It was so good. All competitors just put it all on the line in this match. It was definitely one of the greatest matches of Raw of 2016. Um, Kendrick ends up winning, surprisingly. I thought for sure it was going to be Alexander or Rich Swan, But he ends up winning with the uh, finishing move called the Captain's Hook. And he will all go on now to Clash of Champions to face TJ Perkins for the Cruiserweight Championship. Interesting. And I think they're doing it this way with Brian Kendrick because, you know, he's old. I think he's about 37 years old. They just want him to get his time in before he sails into the sunset. Um, I don't think Brian Kendrick will last long into WWE. I think he's just going to be on a part-time basis with the Cruiserweight division. But you know what? Good for Brian Kendrick. And we'll see how good that match ends up being at the uh, Clash of Champions. I think it's going to be a really epic match. Brian Kendrick had a really, really good showing at the Cruiserweight Classic. Same with TJ Perkins. So it should be really good. Moving into the main event of Raw, we had Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns in a steel cage match. Um, this was unreal. I was definitely really anticipated for this. Um, we haven't seen a cage match in a long time. I really don't remember the last time we actually saw one. But it just, you know, this one was was good. I mean, it was all right, but it was just short. It felt really, really short, and it could have made it go long. Um, but Roman wins. Of course he does. He freaking wins everything. Um, beats Kevin Owens. By jumping, uh, climbing the cage and jumping to the floor first before Kevin Owens can crawl out. And then out comes Rusev. They lock Roman inside the cage with Kevin Owens and they start beating him up. Then out comes Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins does something so crazy. And I literally was cringing hardcore and like losing it because he climbs to the top of that cage. And then cross bodies. Down on Kevin Owens and Rusev from the top. And I'm like, oh my god. Does this guy want to hurt his knee once again? I know he doesn't really lay it on his knee, guys. But come on. Like, Jesus. Two crazy spots in one night. This is why Seth Rollins is the man. And this is why he's one of the best wrestlers right now on the roster. Craziness out of that. And then Seth comes to the rescue of Roman Reigns. Again, I think they're teasing the heel once again. But again, Rollins is now officially babyface. We can say after this week, if we don't, I don't know what the hell we're doing. I think he's uh, but then he's like the most hardcore tweet. I've ever seen but again it looks like they're, they're teasing that shield reunion so we'll see but that's how we end off raw my score for raw this week is 7 out of 10 um, it definitely was a big up with the cruiserweight division the uh, cage match and the beginning of raw and also the list of Jericho definitely gave it a boost so we'll see what we do with Smackdown and as for that let's move into the Smackdown review um, great you know what I, I gave it props to Raw this week, and I really wanted SmackDown to come out over the top. They did okay, but you know what? They didn't do greater than Raw, and I can say that now before I do the review, that Raw definitely won this week over SmackDown, in my opinion. Um, we'll get into SmackDown right now. We start off with Becky and Alexis contract signing in the beginning of the show. Um... It's interesting. I really like the fight feistiness out of Alexa. Um, she's playing a really, really good heel. Uh, I love I love her mic skills. I thought they're going to be pretty weak. I mean, like I didn't really see a lot of mic skills from her in NXT. I know she had a, back, a lot of backstage promos with Mae Blake and Murphy, but you know what? I'm glad Alexa's coming out as that uh, really good heel and could be a credible top heel in the women's division on SmackDown. Um, 
So they have a good contract signing, even though Dan Bryan didn't want any physicalness to happen, and the crowd hated that. It still happened. Um, Becky had a great story as well, and it definitely builds her up as a strong champion, incredible champion. I love the her her way to how she built up her as a champion. Alexa signs the contract and basically whips it at Becky, and then flips the table onto her, and then they start brawling on the outside ramp, and eventually Alexa runs away with Becky holding up the title in the ring. What a way to open SmackDown and get this this feud off and over well not over with but started um should be a really really good match when you do have their match at no mercy i'm really intrigued to see how they build this from here um definitely alexa bliss crediting herself or making her a credible heel top heel in the women's division on smackdown and becky certifying herself as a strong credible champion as well some more women stuff in on smackdown we had naomi and nikki bella face natalia and carmella um we get into like the Naomi Nikki backstage interview and basically Naomi's making, trying to make glow be like the it of SmackDown and you can't make it the Jericho it of SmackDown glow just doesn't work. And Nikki trying to do it too. And just, I don't know. It that segment just felt awkward as hell and too planned in PG nonsense. Oh, it was just gross. Um, Naomi was saying some stuff about glow too. I don't know. I could, you know what? I, I don't know. The segment was boring enough said, but they get into the match um, it barely lasts a few minutes. Carmella drags Nikki out of the ring, basically, and whips her back first into the barricade to cause a disqualification. So it looks like they're continuing this feud with Carmella and Nikki Bella. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do from that. Um, and, and maybe explain to us why they're actually fighting each other and why Carmella has this huge grudge against Nikki Bella because it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So we'll see what happens and perhaps maybe Naomi and Natty feud, which I can't really get behind that because I don't give a shit. Uh, that, that's the feud that looks boring as hell. The feud that should be saved for like main event and just stay on main event because we don't need to see that on a two-hour SmackDown where we have to fill gaps with something we actually want to actually watch. So move on on SmackDown to the Usos versus American Alpha. The American Alpha returning. To the ring, Chad Gable looks like he's fine, but he had his knee wrapped up a little bit, and they came out very, with a very serious look and attitude about them um, to get back at the Usos for what they did to Gable. Usos work Gable's injured knee for most of the match as well, but then Usos end up picking up the victory by super kicking Jordan at the same time, and then Usos splashing Gable for the win. And now it is said that the Usos will go on to no mercy and fight Rhino and Slater for the tag team championships. And you know what? This makes sense. Not to have American Alpha in the in the title picture just yet. Um, I don't think it'd be credible to see American Alpha versus Heath Slater and Rhino two face teams going for the titles at SmackDown's second pay per view. I think that we need to save that for down the line. Uh, American Alpha will get their shot though, but I think it will be when the Usos have the gold around their waist, and it'll probably be somewhere at like Survivor Series or maybe later on down the line at Royal Rumble. I just I'm not sure how long Gable will play this injured leg for. We'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know what they do with American Alpha leading up to No Mercy. Maybe they still have a feud with the Usos leading there and, and having Heath and Rhino at ringside or something. I don't know. I don't know what the WI has planned. But it better be something good. American Alpha is definitely one of the greatest tag teams I've ever seen. And I hope that they have something even at No Mercy for them to do. Um, Usos played a good backstage heel promo as well with Heath and Rhino. Uh, talking about his 26 kids and making fun of Rhino's crackers. Um, so Usos definitely, I like them as a heel and a lot of people love them as a heel now their whole look is unreal and now like even their backstage promo work as heels it works it fits Usos a heel right now is the best thing going for that tag team division we'll move on to baron corbin and apollo feud continuing um then we get the useless jack swagger on commentary why in the hell was he on commentary this was like the most sloppiest work of commentary i've ever seen it didn't look like he knew what he was doing. It didn't like, didn't sound like he knew what he was doing, and it just seemed unneeded. Like it didn't need to be there. Like Swagger, just go away. We don't need you on SmackDown. This was so stupid. And like into the match we go. I mean, it ended up being really good. Um, I love the more intense Apollo Cruz. Corbin ends up even picking up the win. So Corbin wins clean again. Are they? I'm not. I'm not even sure how I feel. Like, are they burying? Cruz right now because he's not homegrown and Corbin is like what's going on here they've they've made Corbin who's like this full-fledged heel and how and like he should be using cheating tactics to win beat Apollo Cruz twice I mean I have nothing wrong with that that's awesome because Baron Corbin is now being 
just just built up even better and better every week, and I love it. I just I don't know what the the get behind of Corbin beating Apollo Cruz clean twice now is. And then after the match, he goes and confronts Swagger and says he should have stayed on Raw. And I'm like, oh no, please do not feud with Jack Swagger, please. That's just gonna be terrible. I don't want it to happen. Swagger, just go to main event. And just just stay off TV. Stay off. Get off. There's no hype or excitement for this guy. I want to know if anyone out there is a Jack Swagger fan. If you are, please let me know because I actually want to know if he has fans out there. I mean, what do you do with Apollo Crews now? Like, if they're gonna continue, if they're actually gonna do this feud of Swagger and Corbin, what do you do with Apollo Crews? Because you need to do something good with this guy because he's so hype and he's got so much talent, and you cannot just bury him every single week. You need to make this guy credible and a top future guy on SmackDown. They need to do something with him. I really hope they do. So we'll move on to Miz versus Dolph Ziggler for the IC title. Um, So as much as this match was good, it had so many problems. So many problems. I know you, everyone agrees out there from the tweets set to the show and just from Twitter reaction. Um, Let's get into a couple things here. So Miz stealing Daniel Bryan's moveset. It really doesn't need to happen. If Dan O'Brien is not going to get back in the ring and fight The Miz, then this actually doesn't need to fucking happen. I don't understand. Like, we, we, we get the, the stupid uselessness of the spray can again. So we get to see this bullshit for the second fucking time in a row. I don't... Why does he need to use a spray can? Why? It's so garbage. We had such a good match, and it could have even led to Miz winning clean for once, but no, he uses the goddamn spray can. Like, Daniel, wouldn't, shouldn't Daniel Bryan have known he was going to do that somewhat, and just fucking, I don't know, just like, tell him, okay, if you use a spray can, you're going to lose your title automatically. What the fuck? I, I, I can't, I, I can't, guys. I can't get behind why the hell the spray can was used again. Um, I don't even know what else to say about this match. Like, how many times are they going to job Ziggler? Like, I want to know. I'll wait. How many times are they going to job Ziggler? Too many times. Too many fucking times. When was the last time Dolph Ziggler won a title? When? I don't remember. They make him look weak. They make him look weak. Week after week after week. I don't understand. I, I, they even make him look weak in the interview, the backstage interview with W.com after. It's fucking bullshit. I don't understand. I, I feel so bad for the guy. Like, does this continue into No Mercy, this feud? Like, I don't know where they even go from here. Is Miz going to get another opponent for the IC title, or is it going to be continuing with Dolph Ziggler? And can, if it's Ziggler, can he finally win the big one? Are we finally going to get to see Dolph Ziggler in the title picture and continue with the title more than, like, one or two weeks after No Mercy if he does win and they continue with that feud? And if not, put Apollo Crews in this damn feud and make him the IC champion to make him a credible superstar on SmackDown. Because this is definitely, if I see this crap more and more between Dolph Ziggler and Miz, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to watch Smackdown. Like, I, Smackdown was good the last two weeks. This definitely just brought it down. I was so pissed off. They went from having a really, really good match to a bullshit ending. And just, I know, ugh, I'm so pissed off at this. They need to increase this feud. and need to make it better, leading it to a mercy if that are the current plans. So speaking of bullshit and unneeded and all that jazz, we get the Orton... Versus Eric Rowan match. Yes, this actually happened on live TV. Eric Rowan faced Randy Orton. I don't know who out there can get behind this. Why must we get these types of matches on a show that is two hours long? That has so much potential to push good talent and have good matches. We get Randy Orton versus Eric Rowan. My God. I guess I could say that, hey, at least we didn't get the return of the fan-loved Gary the Milkman Millman. That piece of garbage that I don't understand why was ever on TV. I don't understand why that wasn't in a dark match or a dark segment 
Why the hell was that even shown on TV? And why the hell did we get Randy Orton versus Eric Rowan? That just straight up sucked. The match sucked. Eric Rowan sucks. Randy Orton sucks. This whole thing sucks. If we get in, we get to more sucky shit. So after Randy Orton wins, obviously, Bray Wyatt appears on the Jumbotron. He says some shit that bored the hell out of me. It's the same shit every goddamn week, saying how he's a god and all this stupid bullshit about how being a god. I'm like, one sec, Bray. Gods don't lose. Okay? You lost 70% of your total matches. How are you a god? I want to know. You've almost like you almost likely got the same credibility as a local jobber. You are not a god. You are a god, maybe, of the jobbers. You are just not a god of anything. I, ca- I cannot believe that he has fucked us over with Bray Wyatt. This guy has so much potential to be one of the top heels on SmackDown in the new face of fear. But they fuck us over by giving a shit like Rowan versus Orton and him doing a stupid promo about calling himself a god and we get no interaction with Orton again this week. Orton's fully clear to compete. Why didn't we get a brawl or something? This feud needs a serious rebooting or a turnaround or else it's going to fail and just plain and simple suck. End of story. So let's move on. To the main event. Amber was Cena and actually can end this review on a good note because I actually love this feud and I, I love how they're doing it. I love how they're building it. I just, I love how Cena is now into it. And a lot of people hate that Cena is now back in the main event picture, but it just makes the feud better. We don't get a simple Ambrose for styles continuation feud. We get an added of John Cena. And this match was actually really good on SmackDown. If you guys missed it, go check it out. It's actually really good. Um, the ending was a definitely ending in crazy fashion. It ended in, in uh, I couldn't believe it. Ambrose countered the AA into a roll-up and actually won by roll-up. He beat Cena by roll-up. And I'm like, oh, I was shocked. I'm like, no, 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 no. They didn't just, really? Cena won by roll-up, or Cena lost by roll-up on SmackDown. Unfreaking believable. I don't know if that's ever happened before. Cena rolls out of the ring in like disbelief. AJ Styles then comes off the barricade with a phenomenal forearm. Forearm. God, sorry. <laughs> and then gets into the ring and then hits the Pele kick on Ambrose. And then we get Daniel Bryan that comes out. And then books next week AJ Styles versus Ambrose for the title. Holy crap. If there's any way to make this feud get any better and continue into no mercy that was just it what booking that was unreal booking and now next week's main event is going to be even more unreal with aj styles versus ambrose i do think cena is going to have some play into that match as well um but i don't think aj styles will actually even lose the title next week i think it's just going to be a really good match i cannot wait to see how this feud continues and i cannot wait to see that match next week unbelievable SmackDown got it definitely a 7.5 out of 10 for me this week. Um, it definitely it would have gotten like an 8 or 8.5, but again, that Randy Orton bullshit brought it down. But definitely unbelievable. I mean, it's so close this week, guys. Um, I have it written down here. I know I just said earlier that Raw won this week, but I have SmackDown at 7.5. Ugh, it's so tough. I mean, I could go ahead and change it right now and put... Uh, Raw at 7.5 and SmackDown 7.0. But, you know, I got to pick a clear-cut winner this week. Even though Raw had its cruiserweights, there's definitely some down points. And I know SmackDown had its down points, too. I just I love SmackDown. I love the fact that it's two hours and every storyline, except for Randy Orton and Eric Rowan, every storyline makes sense. And it, it just I love watching it. I loved it. I gave it a 7.5. I know there's going to be some disagreements with that. But SmackDown definitely won this week. Again, for the third straight week in a row, they're winning the brand wars on the Lowdown Show. And, guys, as for the Lowdown Show, that's going to do it. And I know I'm sorry we didn't have the Luke Gallows polls this week or WWE headlines. Um, so tune in next week for the Lowdown Show, and we'll get our corporate co-hosts back and maybe have some news and more polls for you then. As for that, guys, I'm Kyle Masters. I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host. And I will be continued to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, the glorious Corporate Cappy, next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Lowdown Show, broadcasted live on Speaker at Speaker.com slash NHBWP. 
After it's done, it guys is posted on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Speaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment, and it's easier and convenient for you. Again, if you would like to join on the conversation, have your thoughts, opinions, and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoltzBarWP or by dropping a comment in the comments section on YouTube. That's going to do it, guys. Again, I'm Kyle Masters, and I'm reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. What you gonna do?